What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the Brown Gen. In this video, we're going to go through the Satoshi VM testnet, which is more than likely an incentivized testnet, so you don't want to fade it. And as I talked about in yesterday's video, Bitcoin and everything Bitcoin touches with finance has so much undisplored opportunity. And here we have a ZK rollup layer two to explore. Now, crypto is complicated. Don't forget, you got to do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor, but at the end of the day, if you want coaching, guidance, support, if you want someone to walk you through the steps, give you the white glove service, we have the Web3 Secret Society, a private group that you can join in the YouTube membership below. So today I'm going to do a speed run on how you can get set up on Satoshi VM and how you can sort of, or sort of what you need to get set up and how to do what you need to do to make sure that you put yourself in the best spot to qualify. So the first thing, as a previous viewer had asked, the overview is it's basically Satoshi VM. It's cost to complete. It's basically free. It's your time, which is potentially up to 60 minutes. But most of that is waiting for bridging or the faucet because sometimes these things are overloaded and the chance of an airdrop is medium because they mentioned on Twitter that there was no real uh, airdrop yet. And just the language that they used sort of implies, hey, we haven't said there is one yet. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That being said, nothing's a guarantee ever in crypto. So remember, is it worth your time to potentially farm an airdrop? For me, it is. I also look at it from the perspective of learning a ton. Now, what you're going to need to do this is a computer with an internet connection and a Chrome browser. Because you're on YouTube, I hope this is not too much of a stretch. I know most people do all this stuff on their phone. I can't guarantee that you can use Unisat and do the activities on your mobile. If you are, that's awesome. But for sure, I know this will work with a computer. So the first thing I would say is make sure that you have a MetaMask wallet. Now, if you don't have a MetaMask wallet, exactly what are you doing in Web3? Are you really like one of those soul boys or what's going on here? I really think that you should have this if, if you sort of want to do it. Very simple. All you got to do is like click the button over here to sort of download. Uh, where is it right here? It's been so long since I've done it. It's like a, a Chrome browser extension. So you can probably, where are we? Um, you know what? You can just Google. Let me just find it on another page. Download a MetaMask browser. I really thought it would be here. Oh, okay. So it would look something like this. And basically you can add it to your Chrome, your iOS, your Android, whatever. Okay. The next thing you want to do is go to the Satoshi VM testnet explorer and click on the add Satoshi VM testnet. This is going to come in handy later. Um, otherwise you'll have to add this manually or wait for you to connect. So I like doing this right away. When you click on this button, it asks you if you want to add in this case, I've already done so. So it's asking me to switch. I'm going to hit cancel for now. So that's the first step. Okay. So going back here, you've done the first step check mark. We've got the MetaMask wallet. The second step is to get the Unisat wallet. Now the Unisat wallet, um, I covered this in a previous video. So exploring Unisat, you can find it on the YouTube channel about three weeks ago when I first started talking a, a bit more about airdrops. If you want sort of help sort of getting it set up, watch that video. It's pretty self-explanatory. The one step I would say is when you open up Unisat, I don't know if, you, if I can make this bigger, but you basically click on the gear icon here, go to settings, change your network to testnet because its default is the live or main net. Okay. So the test net is what we need for this. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're good here. The next step is to get test net tokens. And you do that by going to a faucet. Remember links to everything I'm showing will be in the description below. So the Ethereum Sepolia faucet, what you have to do is you put your, um, your wallet address in here. 
you verify that you're not a robot and honestly i find sometimes these things to be a little annoying um, once you've done that you click send me eth now i'm connected with an alchemy account you may have to sign up for one i think it's worthwhile and one thing i always tell people collect your faucets every single day because they're a rate limiting step and sometimes developers have actually traded real money to get a bolus amount of it it's happened in the past it'll happen again in the future so you want to make sure you're farming that it's literally a few seconds i just clicked a button so i got that uh, ethereum sepolia ethereum and now the next step is really to go and grab some tokens from the other faucets so if we go and look at the docs for satoshi vm we can get test bitcoin from two places coin faucet which i already just did and bitcoin faucet so if you open up the link to coin faucet it will take you to a pop-up dialog most of the time where you put your unisat wallet which you can find by clicking on the unisat button for your wallet clicking on the uh the two boxes here next to right look it's right below your amount of bitcoin and it will copy the address into your clipboard you type it in here you click bit get bitcoins and then it puts your ip address for some reason and um the timer of 12 hours when you can request again which is why i'm not showing the actual live page i'm showing you what i submitted keep in mind this thing gets overloaded so at every opportunity once again you want to load these faucet tokens into your wallet the other is bitcoin testnet faucet which is the second link you go in here you type in your wallet address same way and you keep set clicking on send testnet bitcoins oh my god can't even see what's going on here and basically it puts you into the queue and i think the limit is 0 0.0005 i've asked for way more than that but whatever okay so what we're going to do today is we're going to bridge we're going to swap and we're going to create a liquidity pool the swap feature just went live about 13 hours ago and the first step is to bridge over to satoshi vm and the really unique thing about satoshi vm is you really use both your wallets you use like your ethereum uh, your metamask and your unisat so one of the first steps is to bridge and i say the first step because this is the rate limiting step bridging from bitcoin testnet to satoshi vm testnet you see here i have a balance of 0 0.008 i'm going to bridge 0 0.005 hit deposit and you see here this transaction opens up um wish i could zoom in for you guys i'm just going to sign it here and we should be gucci so i just sent a, pretty much all of my bitcoin because the transaction fees are terrible so that's going on the next thing is to go to where are we right here we want so that was the bitcoin bridge you can see it at the top left the next is the savm bridge we click on that here and now we make sure our wallet is connected so if you haven't connected already you see in the top right i have um that is going for my ethereum sepolia account so that's metamask right you see i got 2.8 sepolia eth i literally got 0.5 just now from the faucet and what i will do is i need to transfer um some tsavm now ethereum sepolia is uses eth as the gas but i need some tsavm token and to do that, I'm going to click on this little button here, TA, TSAVM faucet. By clicking on this, you can request 0.21 TSAVM every 12 hours. Oh, I've already done it, but that's what you do to get that 0.21 you see here. So now I'm going to bridge 0.21 over. We'll hit deposit. And now MetaMask is asking, and I'm going to give it the max allocation. I'll hit next. You see how it uses Sepolia Ethereum? We had approve. I just got to sign off uh, because I'm using a hardware wallet uh, for the wallet that I have in question. 
once this approval is done, then I will get the chance to deposit it. This is just the allowance or the contract being signed. So we'll just wait for that. Confirm deposit in wallet. So here we go. This is why it's so important to get that testnet ETH. If you already have it in your Sepolia Ethereum network, great. Um, but this was sort of the beginning steps. Now that we've done that and all of this stuff is bridging, it may take you a little bit. You can come back and check. But I'm going to assume all that is done here. We will now go to the swap function. And what that does is, once again, you want to connect to the right wallet. So I'm going to click on this here, click on Satoshi VM, and this is using my MetaMask with that Satoshi VM network that we set up at the start of the video, hit switch network. And now what I'll do, uh, the Bitcoin that I bridged literally like two minutes ago is still not here. That's why I bridged some more before the video, just so we could go through this. I'm now gonna swap over here. There's only two tokens. I got 0.11 SAVM because the others haven't come in yet. If you put too low, there might not be enough liquidity, but I'm going to put 0 0.05. I'm going to approve SAVM. And we'll just see what's going on here. There we go. It's just lagging. Okay. We'll max it out here. I'll hit approve. Once again, it's asking. I only have to approve it once. I clicked it like so many times. So I'll reject all the extra instances because whatever. Um, and what happens is this is why we needed that Bitcoin balance. If we only did one part of it, it would come here and say, oh, you don't have the necessary gas fees. So remember, we're speed running all of this. Now it's approving the contract. Once that contract is approved, like, like such, you see, we got the approval right here. I am now going to make the swap. So hit swap. Why is it not letting me go down? Swap. So swapping 0.05 SAVM for this much Bitcoin, hit confirm. And now MetaMask is asking, and it's going to use that much Bitcoin. We're going to get approval. And the reason we do all this is we're getting interactions on the testnet. When platforms are looking to um, incentivize their users or reward their users, they're taking a look at who actually used their testnet. And even though it may feel like everyone in the world is doing this now, like I'm probably, I'm definitely not the only YouTube content creator talking about this. I wanted to make a video yesterday, but uh, I can only make one video. So I picked a different topic, but let me tell you, even still, it's not heavily diluted because, um, how do I put this? No matter how many people you think are doing it, there's so many more people who aren't that are in this space. So now that we've made that swap, you see that swap is completed. What we'll do is on the top left, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. There's an option to pull. So when you click the pull button, it brings you here. So this is the last step, which is liquidity providing. What we'll do is we'll first create a pair. And remember, there's only two tokens. So we'll go SAVM and Bitcoin. We'll put 0 0.04. We'll hit supply and it picks the way liquidity pools work, I'm just going to go up a little bit. The way liquidity pools work is it takes like the same fraction of each token. And once we do that, we hit supply. And once again, we will have to approve this. And here we go. We'll hit approve. Perfect. So we got that done. Let's just make sure we're here. And should show up very soon because once we created the pair adding liquidity is very simple we'll just hit refresh hopefully this works it may be taking a while 
add liquidity. Just in case, I'm going to do something here um, only because this is my first time doing it here. But, but typically, it, it should have worked uh, the first way we did it. But never hurts to do it uh, both ways. So we'll go here. Perfect. My position is here, so I have a pool share of 0 0.000168%. Okay, cool. Cool. So we have done it. I hope this makes sense. There will definitely be more activities that are coming out in the future. Make sure. I'm just gonna go. Make sure that you follow Satoshi VM on Twitter because every time they make an update to their test net, you want to be able to go in and make and do that activity. And I'm literally not going to be able to sort of make a video every time a small activity comes out. I might wait for a couple to come out and then do the broader video because that way it's more useful for you guys. But you can also be on top of this stuff by just following them and finding out exactly what's going on. Just remember, be very careful. Tons of people are falling prey to some of the scammers that are sitting in this, uh, this near this Twitter account trying to fish this Twitter account by adding special letters. So just be very, very careful. But if you want support, guidance, coaching through everything you just saw and much more alpha and sort of having that white glove service so that you're ready to just earn in the bull market and you want to learn, this is a perfect group for you, the Web3 Secret Society. I want to thank you guys all for watching the video again. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, share the video with someone that you know, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. With that being said, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.